educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 11th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows it should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the downside. Dow's off just one-tenth of a percent or 35 points. S&P about, about three-quarters of a percent or 29 points. One and six-tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 192. One seven-tenths percent for the Russell 31. One and six-tenths percent for the semis. That's 42 points to the downside. Spot volatility is trade up a buck 52, but still below is 50-day exponential moving average. Gold's off eight bucks. Silver's down seven pennies. Lights recruit off 44 cents. Natural gas is up 44 cents. And our 30 Treasury is up nearly two points, trading out at 138.26. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got uh, Murphy USA. Is that Murphy Beds? Probably not. 12 bucks to the upside, that's about 5%. Plant Therapeutics up about $10 or 107%. That's a good day. Um, BioRad Laboratories up 7 and a half bucks, uh, one and a half percent. Alta Beauty is up 460, that's one and a quarter percent. To the downside, leading the charge dollar wise is Google, off 57 bucks, two and a half percent. Mercado Libre up 40, off 45, six percent. Tesla 42, five percent. Booking Holdings 42, two percent. MicroStrategy 20 bucks, that's about 10 percent to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. No request just yet, so let's just go take a look at the markets, the equity future contract. Let's go take a look at the uh, – let's go start with the NASDAQ, the NQ. So we can I take a moment here. We're going to change screens. In the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see the daily time frame. Now, the daily time frame on Friday closed above – I've got two different sets of profiles, one on the white background chart and one on the black background chart. For example, the black background chart, I won't show it right now, uh, is the resistance level is at 12,837. On the white background charts, the resistance level is at, where is it? It is at uh, 12,037. Uh, so we're close, but no cigar here. So in one, in, on one set of charts, well, here's what I can share with you. It is regardless of which profiles we use, price is trading below the top of those profiles out there. So that suggests there's a possibility what price wants to do is go tag that red oscillator and change on 11658. I say possibly. Why? Because that's the daily time frame that we're taking a look at. Now we take a look at the market breadth for the daily time frame. And the daily time frame right now is still bullish. What I mean by that, we're taking a look at the TAS market breadth um, tools. We've switched this to the daily time frame. If you look over on the left under the uh, market breadth statistics, you'll see there's 33 instruments inside the NDX 100, 33% that are trading above the top of their profile. Only 13% trading below the bottom of their profile, and that'd be 14. So with that being the case, it's not that price can't get down 
and test that 11,658 area. It's just that the daily market breadth does not support that idea. So time will tell. Now we have four on uh, this tool. We have four different time frames that we can utilize to help us understand what the TAS market breadth is. Again, price when price is traded above the top of a profile, it's thought of, that instrument is thought of to be bullish. Below the bottom, it's thought of as a bearish signal. So let's go from the uh, daily time frame. Let's just simply go down to the one hour time frame, the 60 minute. And here we can see that you have, and this work, we are, I guess the purpose of this, or I probably should have said that ahead of time, is we've got very choppy conditions out there. And that is gonna be supported by what we just take a look at here inside the NQ. What I mean by that is the daily time frame chart showed a bullish crossover. 60 minute chart shows a bearish crossover. Only 5% of the instruments are trading above the top of their profile for a 60 minute time frame. Now that supports that perhaps in the daily time, the daily chart, price might pull back to that oscillator and change line. I think we'll need more than that. Here, there are 64 instruments trading below the bottom of their 60 minute profile. So that's a 60 minute chart is bearish. Now if we take a look at, well profile wise, if we take a look at the 60 minute chart itself, the 60 minute chart formed a Rosemont indicator top. It does that at four o'clock, uh, I'm sorry, it does that at one o'clock in the afternoon back on July the 8th. Now it creates a TD9 count at four this morning. And we get a little bit of a rally, and that rally takes us right up into resistance. That was the top of that profile. Now, we have an A to B equals CD pattern, but no bullish reversal candle on a 60-minute time frame. We know that the market breadth is bearish. Even if price rises, it should find resistance at 11,992. That's what the 60-minute chart is communicating to us. If we come back and take a look at our TAS market breadth, we can go. So we've looked at the daily. We've looked at the hourly, two different messages there. If we take a look at the four-hour time frame chart, we're going to see here it's close but no cigar. You've got 27 instruments trading above the top of the profile, 35 trading below. So it's kind of a close call here, but the call is it goes to the uh, bears or the sellers in the market. Now, that was a 240-minute time frame chart. We'll pull over a 240-minute time frame chart just to get a feel for anything else that we can see. So on the 240 minute time frame chart, you see a Rhodes momentum indicator top. We also see that the last 240 minute cycle, that uh, completed, I think it might've been 10, but let me just make sure here. It was at, yeah, 10 o'clock. So the next one, uh, this is a four hour chart, gonna be at 2 p.m. And what price is trying to do is get back inside its daily profile. What that means, it's trying to close above 11, 9, 69, 30. They're at 11, 9, 71. If price gets inside there, closes inside there, even with bearish market breadth, it may be signaling that price is going to try to make a run for the 12066 level. Not that it'll take that out, just that that would be a logical place to move to in a real. Now, if we change to or it changes to positive or bullish market breadth, then that's a different story. And price, in fact, might take those levels out. But that's not the conditions that we have right now. So that was the four hour chart. So we've got the four hour time frame chart, 240 minutes, 60 minutes that are bearish. Um, and uh, if we take a look at the last chart out here, that would be the weekly time frame. And from a weekly standpoint, and this is interesting, very bearish. What I mean by that is there's 9% of the instruments, or 9 exactly, uh, on the NDX 100 trading above the top of the profile. 32% or 32 instruments trading below the bottom of the profile out there. So what we have here, how are we going to summarize this up? We have a choppy market. And it's the TAS market breadth that tells us to expect that to continue right now. Bullish for the daily, bearish for the other three time frames. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Hope you're right. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the uh, Dow trading off about uh, 34 points, one tenth of a percent. S&P's up 29 at 7 tenths, and the NASDAQ 100, 1.5%, 189 points to the uh, downside. Let's go to our first request out here. This is coming in from Hector and Patty, and Hector and Patty's email goes like this. Happy Marvelous Market Moving Monday. Back at you, my friend. Microsoft, could you please work us an AB equals CD pattern, an AB equals CD up on the daily time frame of the June 13th, June 14th, the bottom out there. So we can most certainly do that. Um, let's first uh, let's first take a look at what our three uh, what our three white background charts are communicating to us, Hector and Patty. And then we'll get to the A to B equals CD. Now you might be looking at that A to B equals CD pattern because price closed above the B point. Also happens to be letter B from a Chapman wave. That's the uh, swing point from June 27th. Now that swing on June 27th. Had I believe it was around 24 million shares. Let me see here. Um, it was 24, yeah, 24.6 million shares. And when it crossed over, it closed above it on Friday. It was on 20 million shares. So uh, if it had been on volume, you could easily say, okay, it looks like an A to B equals CD to the upside. We can also see that price was right there where the sellers reside, the top of that daily profile, 268.30. So you're going to need a close, a convincing close, certainly, Patty and Hector, above that high from uh, June the uh, 27th. That high out there is uh, 268.30. And your preference is to see that high fail with more than 24.6 million shares. If you get that, then you'll have an A to B equals C to the upside that I'll draw momentarily because I can draw that easier on the uh, black background tool. Weekly time frame chart formed a TD9 count bottom about four weeks ago. Also was uh, letter G. That is a wave number seven move for the Chapman wave. That was week of June 17th. And then what's taken place since then, Hector and Patty, is price has gotten up to that first level of resistance. That first level of resistance is the red oscillator and change line. Now, on Friday, there was a glimmer of hope. And maybe there is a glimmer of hope because this Friday, if we also get a close above that level, that level being the weekly oscillator and change line, that is going to suggest that Microsoft's intent is to trade up to 273.91 and above that 293.30 and above that 294.51 uh, out there. 
So it looks promising, but what we need to see here is for price to close above that oscillator and change line. And I would say that's taking out the B point with volume. That would be kind of a safe move out here. Now, in the case of the monthly time frame chart, what Microsoft has done is it's pulled back and it's testing support. It actually closed below support in June. It's back above that level because that level that we're referring to is the bottom of the TAS market profile. So what we have here with Microsoft, we're going to switch over to a black background screens. We're going to go ahead and answer the question for uh, Hector, and that is to draw in an A to B equal CD pattern. So here's what it would look like. Our A point out here is going to be the low from the trading session of June 13th. The B point, that's what we were talking about earlier, is the high from June 27th, and the C point is the low on June 30th. Your one-to-one -one price projection level would get you to 279.67. One to one point two seven two, two eighty six ninety five. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it's the next level of resistance on a further move higher, meaning a close above that two sixty eight thirty area would be two seventy three ninety one. If you close above two seventy three ninety one, then that two seventy nine, the one to one A to B equals CD for the daily time frame, or price might be targeting the one point two seven two at two sixty eight or even two ninety six, which is the one point six one eight C to D expansion of the A to B leg. Now, I hope that wasn't too confusing for you. So that's what the A to B equals CD pattern looks like there, Hector. You do not have a confirmed one as we speak just yet. Um, and we know that uh, price is up against a pretty decent resistance level. Top of that daily profile and on the weekly chart, the red oscillator and change line. So thank you, Hector and Patty, for writing in. Much appreciated. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Uh, no other requests that we have, either inside the Tiger's Den or by email. So that says we should go take a look at something else. What's that something else? Well, let's just kind of surf around because we've got mixed messages for sure. We took a look at the uh, NASDAQ 100. Let's spend a little time with the S&P and a few other instruments out here. So for the S&P 500, we have that same mixed message. Oh, uh, oh wait, that's not. this is, well, this is the 30-minute time frame chart. I didn't pull that up for the NQ. So we did see that the NQ was trying to rally. And we already established by taking a look at the other four time frames, 6120, I'm sorry, 6240 daily and weekly, that we've got a mixed bag out there. We've got one that's got a bullish crossover, the other three have a bearish crossover. There is a 30 minute time frame, and this is for the NQ as well. So if we see that price is rising, now that should not be, we start with the shorter time frame, that should not be a surprise to us. Why should it not be a surprise? Because we have bullish market breadth crossovers for the NDX 100 for its 30 minute time frame. Well, what we mean by that specifically is 69% or 69 instruments are trading above the top of their daily profile, whereas 4% or only four trading below the bottom. So for the 30 minute time frame, talk about wacky. The um, you've got 69%. And if we take a look at the NDX 100, for the 60-minute time frame, I'm trying to get that established over here. Let's just put this. Am I on the right chart? Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Um, I really meant that am I on the right screen? Here we take a look at look at the bearish crossover. Only 14 above the top, 52 below. Again, we have a a market here where we're seeing this just uh, jostling going back and forth, and this is the reason why. Uh, and, and I don't see anything clearing up, at least not just yet. I can't be a forecaster and uh, put up the super Doppler and take a look at it. If price was above the top of a profile, uh, that might uh, tell us. So on the 30-minute chart, since that is uh, bullish out here, yeah, we're on the uh, on the NDX 100, um, watch 11.986.80. 11.986.80, call 11.987 is the uh, top of the 30 minute profile for the NQ. But I said we were gonna take a look at the uh, S&P 500, we are. In fact, let's just stay with this 30 minute time frame chart. Let's just change from the NQ to the S&P 500. I think we're probably gonna get similar messages out here. So now we take a look at the S&P 500, that's calculated as we speak. We have 315, 72% of the instruments are trading above the top of their profile versus 6% below the bottom of the profile. Again, that was for the 30 minute time frame. So if you're looking at a 30-minute chart here, you've got positive market breadth. You'd certainly want to know where resistance is on a 30-minute time frame because uh, because of that positive market breadth, price should be able to make its way up to that level. Now, that level, I'm trying to uh, pull this up on our screen here for the ES Mini. If you give it just a minute, I should see it momentarily. 
and maybe more than a moment, and that level is, wow, okay. So if this is just a counter trend move, well, let me just do this here. Let's uh, change screens. I don't want to talk about something, and then you're like, well, what the heck is the guy talking about? Of course, you might say, what the heck is that guy talking about most of the time? But at least if I show you a chart here, well, at least you can see where I'm going with this. So now we take a look at the 30-minute, uh, 60-minute time frame for the ES mini. Wait a minute. This does not have the right. Uh, sorry about that, folks. I'll get the proper symbol up on my screen. There is a symbol called ES. It's just not the one that you and I were after out here. Now we've got it up on our screen. We take a look at the ES mini. Price is trading above the top of its profile. Very interesting. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. So before that break, we were taking a look at the market breadth, TAS market breadth for the uh, S&P 500. Again, this is a 30-minute time frame, 307 instruments, 70% trade above the top of their profile. Again, that's a bullish signal, and only 7% trading below the bottom are 29 instruments for the S&P 500. So for the 30-minute time frame, you've got market breadth bullish. We take a look at the 30-minute chart out here. What this tells us at price right now is trading above the top of its profile is that price should target 3884.75. Do not know where the price will be able to take that out. Looks like it will have the positive market breadth to do that. But that's a key level of resistance. Now, if price does close above that, 3884.75, that says their price could run all the way to the 39.12. Well, it could run wherever it wants to, but 39.20 would be the likely target area. That's for the 30-minute chart. But when we take a look at a 60-minute time frame out here, we have the opposite message. The opposite message is 288 instruments, or 58%, are trading below the bottom of their 60-minute profile, and only 16% or 82 or 82 instruments trading above the top of their profile 
for the 60-minute chart out there. So what that is suggesting to us, at least at this stage here at the moment, is that we've got a choppy market out here. And uh, that choppy market, I don't see that resolving itself just yet. But if we look at the 60-minute time frame, we can see that price is right now, and this uh, not uh, going to be uh, this chart's not going to have any meaning until 2 p.m. But as of 1:31 p.m., price is trading above the top of its bearish structured profile for the hourly time frame chart. And that says a close above 38.72 would suggest a run up to the 3900 area. So, uh, but we have to see where this really uh, closes at 2 p.m. versus where it's trading at 1.31 in the afternoon, although it does look pretty good at this moment. But we know because, because of the market breadth, the bearish market breadth, you know, perhaps we're going to see price um, uh, push it back out there. Now, when you look at the 10-minute or the 5-minute charts, the 10-minute chart is going to form bar number 8. So that would say you could get a TD9 count pattern, uh, 8, 1.40... And not until 2 p.m., not until we come into the uh, close of the show out there. So a mixed bag with regard to market breadth, and that's important to understand, and that's why we're getting this choppiness that we see out here inside of the market. So I hope that helps you understand. I hope I did a decent enough job of trying to communicate that to you. Let's try to do an even better job and do an analysis of Apple. And this is for uh, Nancy, I believe. Maybe a yeah, Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. And uh, so Apple has, in essence, a confirmed a to B equals CD to the upside. The B point out here was taken out, and that B point had volume of 70 million shares. When it was taken out, it was taken out with 66 million shares. That was the trading day of uh, July the 7th. So it is lighter volume, but it's still pretty good. I mean, is that that's within, what, 5% uh, or so? So uh, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. Where price is running into your real issue out here, Nancy, and this is on the long side, You've got a nice TD9 count bottom for the weekly. The daily's got a confirmed by the D point pattern, and the monthly has nothing other than a TD9 count top that took an erosion to mitigator top that pushed price back to support, which is held 140.48. But it's really going to be that red oscillator change line that's going to give you the answer. Is Apple bullish, or is this just a counter trend move? A close above 147.64, or thereabouts right now, would suggest a further rally. And, of course, we'd come back to that, take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern on the daily time frame chart uh, for price to move to the upside. So, Nancy, I don't know what else it is out here that you would like to know about Apple. I'll just quickly here move over to the black background screens. Uh, the black background screen is going to show you the A to B equals CD pattern that is underway at the uh, moment. But, of course, what we know, what this weekly chart here doesn't tell us, the weekly chart doesn't tell us where the resistance battle line is, which right now is at 147.63. So I'd say price wants to get to the 147.63. That'll at least come close to completing that one-to-one -one move. If there was a bearish reversal candle that then formed, then you would have a sell the D point or a Gartley sell point pattern. And But we don't have that as we speak just yet. So, Nancy, thanks so much for writing in, and I hope that helps you out. Dan and uh, from Boston wanted to take a look at uh, ticker symbol SAM. So let's get that fired up out here. And uh, let's get that on the black background charts as well. And this is what, Sam Adams? Yeah, Boston Beer. So now when we take a look at Sam Adams, here's what we know. A mixed message, Dan. Price above the top of the daily profile, again, presumed to be bullish, as long as price remains above 304.13. Price below the bottom of the weekly profile and below the bottom of the monthly profile. So that would be presumed to be bearish. So here's another mixed message to a consolidating type market out here. Let's go change our screens. Let's go to the white background screen, see if there's any kind of patterns out here that would assist Dan, or perhaps we just need to understand where that oscillator and change line is. So for the daily time frame, you've got a Rogemint indicator bottom. You've got a TD9 count bottom. Price moves higher, pulls back, looks like about a 0.786 retracement. Never break support, meaning the bottom of his profile, 292.71. It's perhaps a chance that this is setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. But what we do know is price is trading above the top of its profile. That's on the daily time frame for Sam Adams. That's a bullish outcome. On the weekly time frame chart, let's pull this back a bit. What we have is a TD9 count bottom, Rose Mintum indicator bottom. Price above that oscillator and change line. Your resistance level is going to be at that 395.62 area. That is a TD9 count breakdown resistance level, Dan. Uh, I don't know that price is going to get up there. You've got the bottom, but you've got another issue with regard to sellers sitting at 365.01. But if they can take out those sellers, then the move to 3. 
uh, 95.62 would be likely. On a monthly time frame chart, you have a negated, this is last month, a negated TD9 count. And so that's not a good thing because that's telling you strong momentum to the downside and that price should head lower. Now, you would likely ask, head lower to where? I would say 107.41. 107.41 is a TD9 count breakout level that takes you all the way back into 2012, 2013 time frame. That's the monthly chart for Sam Adams. So overall, with regard to Sam Adams, um, price should be able to continue to move higher. Nice bottom on the daily, nice bottom on the weekly. Resistance level, the first one up should be at about the 36501 area. So hope that helps you out, Dan. Thanks so much for the request. Uh, I think we've got another request out here, and that is for, nope, that was for uh, G-Man. Well, that might, I don't know if that was uh, Nancy. Uh, I don't think so. No, it wasn't Nancy. That was for somebody else who wanted to take a look at Apple. So we, we kind of killed two birds with one stone. Uh, we do have another request. This one's coming in from Mimi. So Mimi writes in, and uh, she says, uh, please comment on Oxy, Occidental Petroleum, OXY is the ticker symbol there. Uh, what uh, Mimi is looking to do is to get long this uh, this instrument. So we pull this up on our screen out here. Let's see what we see. We see Occidental Petroleum has a TD9 count bottom. And what that did out here was ran all the way up into resistance. And that resistance level, Mimi, was a top of its daily profile. On top of its daily profile on Occidental Petroleum is... 63.04. So if price can't close above 63.04, that's good. What we can see right now is that price is trading. Oh, X Y. Second. Uh, tr price is trading below its red oscillator and change line, and therefore, if price remains below that area, it increases the odds of a further pullback. Now, that area for the red oscillator and change line is currently printing at 59.81. So, Mimi, if price closed below 59.81, you're looking for an entry point. What I would suggest to your entry point is between 55.80 and 57.25. You're trading with inside a daily bullish structured profile. You had a road momentum indicator top that led to a TD9 count bottom. And now price is just dealing with the resistance as it tries to battle to make its way to 70.99. On the weekly time frame, there is no topping pattern out here. There was a road momentum indicator signal triggered, but no bearish reversal candle. The monthly time frame chart says, Mimi, be careful, because longer term, I want to pull back and test my monthly oscillator and change line. That's currently printed 43.90. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Bio 
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're still taking a look at Occidental Petroleum. This is for Mimi, who is looking for a uh, entry point to go along out here. What we established when we took a look at those white background charts was the monthly's got a TD9 count top, the daily has a TD9 count bottom. And here, and we can see that price consolidated with inside its daily profile. This is your left hand panel chart that you're looking at. So we know our resistance is at 6304. We also know that once price comes back and tests its swing point, that was from June 22nd out there, if you can do it on lighter volume, as it did on the trading session. So the volume on that swing point is 37 million, 37.8 million. That was tested on July the 5th with 40 million shares. Then it was tested on the next trading session, July the 6th, with 30 million shares. Not enough to break them to the downside, tried to bust on the upside, couldn't bust out the upside because of where the sellers were at at the top of that profile. So Mimi, if you want to take a stab at this, I would say around 56.97. That is the top of that swing point from the trading day of June 22nd. And what you would like to do is see that pulling back with less than 37 million shares. So if it's an hour of trading, uh, take that volume, multiply times 6.5. If it's three hours of trading, take the total volume of three hours, divide it by three, multiply times uh, 6.5. And that'll give you a feel for what the volume matrix may look like by day's end to then assess whether or not price is pulling back with volume or without volume. If it's pulling back with volume, depends on where price closes because if price closed underneath 56.97, that would say that price should go test the bottom of that candle, the bottom of that candle being 54.30. But right now, um, without knowing the results of that, should price pull back, we'll use 56.97 as the uh, price target with less than, uh, da, 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 less than 37 million shares. So I do hope you, uh, that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. We had another request. This is from Jimmy D. Wants to take a look at MPW. So we're going to do that. MPW is what? Manpower maybe? I don't know. Uh, MPW is a medical properties trust. I wasn't even close out there. Uh, if we take a look at this instrument, the daily time frame, what do we got out here? Short of uh, other than an A to B equals CD, I don't see anything, but let's look at this. So Several A to B equals CD patterns, and you had the three river morning stars. So, okay, I get it. There's your bottoming pattern for the daily time frame. On the weekly chart out here, well, you don't have any kind of bottoming pattern just yet. A to B equals CDs, we can draw those in, but no bullish reversal candle. Does not mean that price will not target its oscillator and change line, but on a weekly time frame, uh, Jimmy, no confirmed bottom, nor is a confirmed bottom on the monthly time frame, and price is below that support area. So back to the daily, what do we know out here? Great question. What do we know? Price is attempting to stay above the top of its daily profile. You say that's going to zero. Uh, it's trying to trade above the top of its profile, which is 1550. Um, I would say if you get two consecutive closes, that says we had higher. But price already closed above this two consecutive times, and that was not the result. So, but if price does close below 1550, I won't say it's going to zero. I would say it's going to test its oscillator and change on around the 1494 level. So what else can we take a look at? Let's just change panels here for you. So give us a moment. Let's go to the black background screens. Maybe if we pull this back, when I say pull this back, I'm just looking at the daily time frame right now. Maybe something will stick out at us. I don't know that it, that it will or not, but at this stage here, there we go. 
So what's price trading into? So this takes us back into the 2020 bottom is what it looks like. So we'll just simply go monitor or draw what that price level is. So we can draw that across the uh, screen out here. And just curious whether or not price is testing that level. That level, by the way, is going to be the high from the trading session of March the 17th. That is 1512. Now the volume on that swing point is 9.8 million shares. So let's fast forward out here, 9.8 million shares. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, that's for sure. Give me a second here. Okay, so price got below that. Daily time frame gets below it, closes below that with 12 million shares. Wow, so it took out that swing point. Okay, so that says danger. Let's go see what this did on a weekly time frame. So it's trading with inside that swing point. Yeah, so it's still trading in. So here's MPW, March 16th swing point. The low, 1235. The high, 1583. The volume, 40 million shares, 41 million shares. You close inside, it was 60. Okay. So because we're still inside this swing point out here, so this was the kind of work that we really had to do here, Jimmy, in order to try to get an assessment of what's going on. And we can see on the weekly basis, price is trading with inside that swing point. Again, that's the one that began the week of uh, March 16, 2020, and it's trading inside there with volume. What that says to Stevie is that its intent, its intent being price, wants to go target and test the bottom of that swing point. So I'd say 12.35, would be the number inside of MPW for the, uh, that's the weekly time frame out there. The monthly time frame, you're below the bottom of the profile. So again, kind of a mixed message out here, right? I say right, you say, I don't know what you're talking about, right? We just took a look at a swing point. Price is trading in that swing point with some volume. And it's still trading inside there, whether it's daily or whether it's weekly. Yet when we take a look at the daily time frame chart, although we don't have a bottom pattern other than a buy the D point out there, Price has, gotten able to, has been able to get above the top of that daily profile. And that would suggest a further move higher out there. But when we look at the weekly, what you and I know is in order for MPW to get back into its range, you need to see a close on a weekly basis above $15.83. Right now you're trading at $15.46. So that may happen. It just has not happened during the last uh, four to five weeks out there. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Jimmy. Thanks so much for the uh, request. And have a uh, magnificent Monday. Next question coming in from David H. David in Tomball, Texas. Wants to take a look at Sand Ridge Energy. SD is the ticker symbol out here. Let's go ahead and get that fired up on the uh, black background charts. And let's further. Um, okay, we got that going. Let's go ahead and read David's question. Please look at Sand Ridge Energy. SD is the ticker symbol. On the daily chart, is there any significance to the trading day of July the 6th? So let's just open this up. Let's turn to July the 6th out there. And uh, July 6th, let's just draw a, a little arrow so everybody can see. Uh, green arrow. Let's make it a green arrow. July the 6th. Where's July 6th? July 6th. July 6th. Huh. Am I looking at the right? Yeah, SD. Let me make sure. Yeah, so SD. And you're asking, is there any relevance, any significance to the trading day of July 6th? where a gap up that was created for March 16th. So one of our charts is not correct. Am I looking at the right thing? Well, you say 7-6, where am I? I'm on, I'm on June 6th, my apology. My apology, I'll eventually get there. So you say July 6th. So I really think what you're, so the question is, is there, a, I don't have a gap. So that's really the issue. Here's July the 6th. The high of that candle session is 1562. The low of the next session is 1557. There is no gap out there. Now, I do know that my favorite polar bear, David White, I know that he does gaps differently. So I look at the entire candle. And I, I don't want to say what David does. I do know that he does things differently. So David H., it's possible you're taking a look at the way that David White, David W. does. But as far as Stevie is concerned, there is no gap there. So there is no significance because there is no gap. If there was a gap, it would just simply be a bullish signal out there for the daily time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So uh, I've read uh, David H.'s uh, message a little further, and the gap, in fact, that David is talking about is this gap back here that was formed on uh, March the uh, 15th. You say the 16th through the 18th. So here's here's the way that I would really just take a look at it. For, forget the gaps at this stage here. Those gaps, um, I mean, I guess what you're saying is that gap was filled, which is true. So he's looking at this gap here from March 16th to March the 17th and that was what that was filled out there I think another way to really look at this here David is what price was doing was it was testing a swing point so it's kind of like a junior swing point out here for March the 16th and that swing point had volume of 2.2 million shares and that was tested out here on that trading session of uh, July the 6th with 1 million shares so you've got a light volume test and rejection of a swing point okay so we have that so support in essence is held but what we also have out here, David H., is we've got a new profile, or not a new profile. It's been around for about a week and a half. And that profile, the bottom and center, both located at 1667. That should have been strong support. That strong support failed. It's now turning out to be strong resistance. So really, in the case of Sandridge Energy, in order to get some traction, it has to at least get back inside that profile. That's at 1667. If it doesn't get inside there, 
you know, then we should likely see another test of the 1410 area. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks that I uh, kind of screwed that up in the beginning there, but uh, we finally got it done. We're going to close the show, take a look at uh, corn futures out here. So what corn is doing, it's the December contract that we're taking a look at. I'm just simply going to expand this out here. And as we take a look at what's transpired, there was a new profile that formed above price. It did that on Friday. And this is a bearish structured profile. And what price did this morning was it got up, tested the center, and because of the bearish structure profile, there's both buyers and sellers there, but now price is trading back below the bottom of that profile out there, and that's the corn. Now, corn does have a buy the deep point pattern out here, um, and it, it, it generated, well, does it have a buy the deep point pattern? Maybe not. Uh, oh, I'm looking at the December 23 contract. My apology. I'll tell you what. Who made that request? Whoever did. Uh, RJ Lee, I'll send you that information inside. Take care, folks. <laughs>